Hello and welcome to South Asia Chat, a podcast brought to you by the Institute of South Asian Studies at the National University of Singapore. I'm your host, Divya Murali, a research analyst at the Institute. In this episode, we will be talking about the growing nexus between Bangladesh's economy and Chinese investments. Bangladesh's economy, like many countries around the world, is challenged by multiple macroeconomic issues induced due to the aftermath of the pandemic and the continuing geopolitical conflicts. While the country tries to deal with the economic issues by actively forging economic partnerships in and around the region, it is noticeable that the Chinese investments in the country has steadily risen. In this edition of South Asia Chat, we will be speaking to Dr. Muhammad Masudur Rahman, visiting research fellow at the Institute of South Asian Studies, to understand this growing nexus between Bangladesh's economy and the rising Chinese investments. Welcome, Dr. Masood. Thank you very much for having me today. Let me start off by asking you on Bangladesh's economy in general. Bangladesh's budget for the current fiscal year was presented in June 2022. Now that the first quarter has ended, the set of macroeconomic issues that were critical before the budget seem to be relevant now too. In the context, could you give us a general evaluation of Bangladesh's economic performance and how has it changed or not changed since the budget was presented? Yeah, thank you very much. As you have mentioned, Bangladesh economy basically going undergone some kinds of stress at this moment. We mentioned like the inflation is all time high. Last month in August, still there is a you know inflation did not disclose by the BBS. Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, but July inflation rate was 7.6%. But last month in August, government increased fuel price about 50%. So it seems inflation will be double digit in August. So we are waiting to see what's going on. But yes, particularly food price, you know, and food inflation will be more than, you know, 10%. Second, the fund reserve last almost 10 months is continuous decreasing. And last year it was $48 billion, now comes to $38 billion. It's more than 30% fall within last 10 months. So that is a huge, you know, issues because fund reserve is very important to pay import bill. And then uh, you see the import has been increasing over the years and last few months also increased exponentially, you know. Of course, the export also increase, but a rate of export increase is much lower compared to the import increase. That's why this, you know, the balance of trade deteriorated and, and the fund reserve also falling. And third, you see the exchange volatility is a big issue currently because Bangladesh is an importing country. So the exchange fall from like well, last six months from uh, in 84 taka per dollar to now 105 or 6 taka per dollar. So that's mean around 20%, you know, depreciated taka. Of course, uh, compared to with other currency, for example, British pound or Japanese yen or Chinese yen or rupee, it's not deteriorated that much. But compared to dollar, it's deteriorated you know, sharply. So this is a new, you know, issues and Bangladesh government and you know, Bangladesh Bank, Central Bank, try to, you know, manage and stabilize this exchange volatility. So another is the remittance, because Bangladesh economy, you know, three issues. One is export, import, and remittance, and of course, domestic in you know, agricultural sector. So remittance is very unstable over the years. And I just check, you know, last month in September, remittance came like $1.54 billion. Normally, uh, Bangladesh receives around $2 billion, ex- you know, remittance every month. But it, it is, you know, it's m- much unstable over the, like, few months. So this also, you know, deteriorate the, you know, the balance of payment and balance of trade and also current account balance. So over, overall, the economy is, you know, most of the indicators is some kinds of alarming and economy is under stress now. So clearly there are a set of issues facing Bangladesh's economy. Uh, So on that theme, what do you think Bangladesh could do to successfully emerge out of this challenge? 
what is your prescription for remedy yeah at this moment number one we need to stabilize the currency so you see the taka has been depreciated more than 20% last few months and it's continuous falling so that is one issues uh, so, so so bangladesh like uh, how to manage this forex management not only depend on dollar but they can also manage with other currency for example bangladesh import from china and india like 50% bangladesh import come from these two country so maybe bangladesh can deal with rmb and indian rupee importing from india and china so that could be reduce some kinds of risk also japanese yen british pound can be also other currency so if bangladesh can manage you know the foreign exchange management with some other currency not only depend on dollar that it could be another you know way to reduce this kinds of risk of course the inflation is major issues and it is a global issue it, because you see this last year most of the developed countries the, the interest rate was negative even you know usa japan european countries and from this negative to turn to high positive so this is a major issue because of inflation so they try to you know curve the demand so the inflation need to you know, stabilize but you see last month the government increase you know energy price 50% that actually ex- accelerate inflation again so that kinds of things maybe need to reduce export of course need to increase but simultaneously import need to be you know some kinds of uh, maybe little bit is, because now you know import is going to 62 billion dollar quite you know export is 52 billion dollar so big difference between export and import and who is actually has a huge impact on fund reserve and account account balance so some kinds of uh, minimize import particularly luxurious goods or the which is not maybe you know capital intermediate goods that need to be reduced so if government can minimize some kinds of import to you know less import of luxurious products or other kinds of maybe expand you know expenditure that can reduce that could be another way to you know minimize this problem another is maybe we need to bring more investment so not only the you know private investment public investment also for investment so investment can increase you know supply and you know employment creation so that can stabilize this kinds of inflation also you know overall macroeconomic management picking on the queue of chinese investments uh, you indicated that attracting investments is one of the crucial components for bangladesh to tackle the current challenges it faces now in 2016 china declared that ties with bangladesh would be enhanced one of a strategic partnership since then bangladesh has been seeing a, a steady growth in chinese investments could you throw some light on this and perhaps say how it has benefited bangladesh oh yes yeah. chinese investment actually has uh, started to increasing in 2016 when xi jinping visited dhaka and bangladesh joined bri belt and road initiative and that time uh, the sign around 40 billion dollar bilateral you know investment and uh, th- that has huge impact particularly uh, infrastructure related project for example podda bridge which has been you know, recently uh, you know launching launched uh, i think and it was like 3.6 billion dollar project and this you know funded most of the funded by the malaysia government and chinese you know uh, fund also some other major you know mega project like you know tunnel under konfli rivers so this is always you know big project is a big billion dollar project uh, there are also some kinds some you know uh, infras- infrastructure project that bangladesh you know doing now implementing now by support from chinese investment uh, so this has been so far very successful and you know investment is quite good but of course there are some issues there implementation issues delay of you know project there are some issues there but so far yes chinese investment is quite you know successful bangladesh 
and this also increasing you know bringing some other investment like japanese investment like russian investment indian investment so uh, because this is interlink with one project to other project so th this is also some kinds of you know spillover effect of this kinds of investment and in the economy so just to play the devil's advocate here just want to ask you do you have any concerns about this trend of rising chinese investments in bangladesh or well, if you check i just gone through the debt bulletin of bangladesh government this is actually published last uh, this year in june so in this uh, debt management bangladesh receive uh, around you know 49 billion dollar external debt and among this 49 a uh, billion dollar um you know there's two kinds of sources here one is multilateral you know fund funding sources like world bank adb and there are some bilateral sources so bilateral sources mostly japan china and russia india korea so bilateral if you see the uh, bilateral source is around 39% where is multilateral is is you know 61% so and among this bilateral you know um, debt chinese debt is around 21% what is japanese debt is 45% so japan is number one provider loan provider to bangladesh and russia is 22% because russia bangladesh you know take loan for the uh, nuclear power plant from russia so th so russia is implementing this project so that's why it is a around 4 billion dollar project it's 12 billion dollar project but russia will provide like 4 billion dollar so bangladesh recently last 4 5 years actually taking a lot of loan from from china but if you compare overall loan this is like lower compared to other sources compared to multilateral you know source is much lower even compared to bilateral source is much lower so um, it's not that much of problem at this moment bangladesh because some other issues if you see bangladesh you know external debt to gdp ratio is only 11.9% and overall debt ratio debt to gdp ratio is 32% if you compare with the imf you know threshold imf threshold for external debt is 40% so bangladesh position is only 11.8% 9% so much lower and compared to other also you know bilateral uh, source chinese source is not that much at this moment of course recently because suddenly it's increase it shows like there are so so many you know project going on but uh, in reality not that much at this moment so as you mentioned that uh, the chinese investments at current levels are completely at manageable levels for uh, bangladesh uh, so there is no debt trap kind of situation but uh, we see that nations in south asian region be it sri lanka or pakistan are having to deal with geoeconomic issues due to chinese investments in critical areas and infrastructure so are there any lessons there for bangladesh to draw from this regional experience even though it might be muted now yeah so chinese investment uh, in sri lanka and pakistan is quite high compared to bangladesh and if you check if you see uh, you know in, in sri lankan uh, external debt to re to gdp ratio is around 64%, 64% pakistan is 49% so external debt to gdp ratio while bangladesh is around 11.9% so much lower so external debt you know for bangladesh is much lower compared to sri lanka pakistan second if you if you compare uh, you know foreign exchange reserve pakistan foreign exchange reserves is now is in july is like around 12.5 billion dollar sri lanka is 1.8 billion dollar so they cannot even manage two months of their import where bangladesh is 38 billion dollar so uh, bangladesh macro economy in the fundamental is much stronger compared to sri lanka and pakistan but of course the when you implement the project that i mentioned you maybe you know but the bridge started when the, you know it started 5 years before it was initially 1.6 billion dollar project 
and ended with $3.8 billion project. So the implementation cost is high. Transparency is less you know, compared to other. Uh, and also uh, there are issues of you know, um, corruption and mismanagement, leakage. So this kinds of issues is there. Also, uh, even next year is coming the election. So there are some projects which may be not productive project, some tower building which is not really productive, that, you know, Sri Lanka has done these kinds of things. So it's very extremely need to careful to choose the which project is important, which project are productive. Otherwise, if we implement this kinds of mega project and then end up with, you know, the burden of debt. So we need to be careful choosing this kinds of project and also efficient implementation project. So now that we just spoke about what Bangladesh can learn from Sri Lanka and Pakistan experience. Just like to flip the coin now and ask what lessons are the smaller states in the region can learn from Bangladesh's experience. To sort of lay a context, Bangladesh is situated between the two Asian giants, India and China, and the country seems to be maintaining good relationships with both the giants as it strengthens its economic ties with them. Is there a lesson here for other smaller states in the South Asian region to learn on how to do this balancing act? Yeah, you're right. You see, uh, if you just uh, look at Bangladesh uh, investment and foreign external debt, Bangladesh depends on not only in India and China. Bangladesh, you know, extend his horizon, Japan, Korea, you know, USA, UK, and also multilateral, you know, you know, Asian Development Bank, um, World Bank. So, and think about, okay, how I can develop my economy. So that is the issues. And based on that, what balance we need to do? So, for example, you see uh, India. India is member of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So they, they are with China. And at the same time, they join Quad. So they they try to bring all benefit from all these sources. You see, the Turkey is a member of NATO, selling drone to Ukraine, also importing you know oil and you know corn from from Russia. Pakistan has very good relations with China. At the same time, they have a very good relation with USA. So Bangladesh is trying to balancing with you know its own benefit. They they you know they're inviting Chinese for the investment, they're also inviting India for the investment, they're also inviting Korea and Japan, USA. So they try to, you know, organize all their need in different sources and bring investment and loan, and then they can, you know, they, they have some kinds of, you know, holistic approach for their economic development. So that is the way so far Bangladesh, you know, successful doing this. So, sort of tying everything together and finally, to finish this off, how do you see Bangladesh's economy performing in the next couple of years and what role Chinese investments do you think will play in it? Yeah, Bangladesh, so far, they start with some kinds of uh, investing and end up with the huge cost and increased cost over the times. Th that could be few, you know, a region. One is, you know, the input cost increase over the times, so uh, th this is one issue, but uh, there are many mega projects ongoing at this moment. So if end with this end up with this project uh, after a few years, then it will be major, you know, economic shift, for, you know, in in Bangladesh, uh, and major not only you know infrastructure development, some other area of soft infrastructure, digital economy you know, skill development, this kind of project also going on. So the government is trying to focus on like a special economic zone. So this kinds of, uh, you know, arrangement, not only, you know, physical infrastructure, but also, you know, the soft infrastructure, skill development, you know, is coming. So th that is one area. And, and Chinese investment, China has a special economic zone, you know, and it's the biggest special economic zone that investing, you know, in Bangladesh. But also, I 
in, in precise because uh, not only economic development, there are some social development and environmental development. If we do not actually emphasize on that, then this development will not survive. It's not sustainable. And Bangladesh somehow overlooked, you know, last few years, this area. Education sector is overlooked. Health sector has been overlooked. You know, flood is major for issues in Bangladesh. And this has been, you know, is quite challenging over the years. So this kinds of area, Bangladesh also need focus and target based investment. Government is providing a lot of stimulus packages, but this you know, stimulus package has a lot of issues, you know, not targeted, there's huge leakages. So this needs to be dealt very carefully and efficiently. So if, we, if Bangladesh can manage with all this you know, investment, uh, proper investment, efficient investment, focus on not only economic issue, but also social issue, you know, manpower development, um, soft skill development, environmental issues, that is critical at this moment. If you see Dhaka, Bangladesh is the number one you know, globally, the polluted city, polluted country. So this, you know, actually this kind of negative effect of, you know, foreign investment. So it's, it's, it's not visible, but they know because they're going for a long time investment for 10 years, 20 years. So they need to know all these things. So, yeah, I, I think Bangladesh has a huge potential for his economic growth and development and so far doing successfully, but also need to, you know, focus on these kinds of issues you know, macroeconomic management, social development, and also environmental, you know, these kinds of issues that Bangladesh is dealing. Thank you, Dr. Masood, for that. It was a pleasure talking to you. And it was a very comprehensive explanation for all the questions asked. Thank you. You were listening to South Asia Chat. To learn more about our work, visit us at isas.nus.edu.sg. You can also follow us on social media. We are on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. Have a good day.